Hey friends, Marcus here, and in this video, we are going to answer a question that many of you have asked since we started the channel, which is, tell us about the boat. So here on Saltwater Fishing University, we got two boats. We got the big one, which is the Speechless, a Blackwell 40-footer, and we've got this one here, which is a Steigercraft 28-footer, so Steigercraft 28, true pilot house, this is the Chesapeake version. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what I like about it because I've had it for a little bit over a year now. I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about it. And we're gonna look at, is this maybe the best offshore pilot house that's less than 30 feet? So let's start in the cockpit area. I'm gonna give you just a quick overview of things. You've got, in this case, two Yamaha, 300 horsepower. You're saying, okay, Marcus, give me the stats, give me the digits. Here's the skinny. It will go about 47, 48 miles an hour. Could you get it to 50, maybe? <laughs> and you wouldn't think that a traditional pilot house, it doesn't look super speedy, would go that fast, but this boat, <laughs> it'll absolutely rip. Now, in terms of gas mileage, you're looking about 1.4 miles per gallon at a cruise speed of 36 miles an hour. Okay, does that help you? Hopefully that helps you. Yeah, it does burn the fuel. That's because it's a boat. What you see here, what I'm standing on right now, this traditionally is a very large live well uh, slash fish storage area. And in my case, I've got a sea keeper. So because I've got a sea keeper, I took this storage area up and now replaced it with the sea keeper as a trade-off. So I lost some capacity to store fish, yet at the same time, you get the benefits of a sea keeper, which are awesome. In terms of the stern, you've got a pretty decent size fish box in the stern also can act as a live well too and uh, you know for an area like the chesapeake bay you can you can fit most fish in this so also in the stern area you've got a big platform that you can stand on so if i'm fighting a fish up here can really move around i like that you don't get that in every boat so that's pretty cool i feel that digging it. You know, when you think about Steigercraft, to me what I think the word is utility. This is not about glitz and glamour and having this super sleek, you know, like pursuit style finish. Because you want to get this thing bloody, man. You know what I mean? This cockpit area, you want to get bloody. And so that's why it's meant for the serious fisherman or fisher person and you can see that here just by looking underneath the gunnels check this out you've got just simple storage areas that are labeled right you can put your tools i mean this is this is like basic stuff but you don't see that in a lot of places so it's got utility i like that of course we got the shore uh we got the shore power here as well so that's going to be necessary and then we got of course some more storage here in the stern Got plenty of storage in there for your uh, fenders and whatnot, bumpers, more here. You can get a bench, but you know what? When you're serious about fishing, you don't want no bench here. So that's what, that's why this is here. I've got the access to the bench. I don't ever, I don't ever use it. So as we're about to enter the helm area, let's just talk about what we got going on here. First off, notice this is a true pilot house. It's got a wall. So there's different models of the Steiger craft. They've got the Miami and they've got the Chesapeake version. Because if you're down in Miami, you're gonna probably want this to be more open. But if you're in the Chesapeake, 
like I am right now, actually we're in the Potomac River, or if you're further north, if you had it coming out of New York or wherever you're coming out of, I would not, not have an actual wall on your pilot house. And then when you've got the second helm station, you got to y'all have a second helm station because you might say, well, it's just so close. It's not a big boat. Yeah, but you can solo fight a fish when you're trolling. You can work the boat and you can move around. That's a big deal. You want a second helm unit. So make sure you get that. Also, we've got a thruster on this boat. That's an option that you have a bow thruster. So some people really like that. We've got that here as well. Okay, so we've now talked about this. Let's go inside, shall we? All right, so now we're in the pilot house area of the boat. I'm gonna start here on the port side. Now you got a couple different options for seating over here. I've seen Steigercraft do this over time. Now sometimes they'll just have a single bench that people can sit on. The problem with having a single bench is it's lower and when it's lower, you can't see out the windows very well. So I definitely like this setup that you see here more. Love the fact that you've got this table where two people can sit and face each other. Now the one drawback to this that I would say is it's not necessarily great seating, especially if it's a little bit bumpy because you can't really put your legs against anything. That being said, I would absolutely choose this. Love having this table. Certainly great on those days when everybody's just talking or you play cards, have a good time while you're fishing. I mean, just a lot of reasons for it. Big fan of this, like this. Like I said, this table goes down and you can turn it into a bench or even a, a, a lay down bed, if you will. So that's what you're looking at with the, uh, with the stern side here. And underneath of this, you've got some more storage. Now in my case, you got your typical drawer right here. But for this unit, this is where you'll see a lot of the, the batteries live. And underneath this area too is where we've got our heating AC unit. And so we took up that storage by having those creature comforts. Should you do that? That's, that's your call. I can tell you, I have no regrets. No regrets, y'all. We've got another storage unit. And uh, this would be considered a fish box. But I can tell you, um, I wouldn't really want to put my fish in the pilot house area. I don't think I would have used it for that. Um, that being said, it's very big, so I just use it for storage. In my case, it holds the two main batteries for that Seakeeper gyro stabilizer that we have. Uh, that being said, it is really, really good for storage, and uh, you can put a lot of stuff in it, as you can see, because mine's pretty dang junky. All right? Now, on the starboard side, that's where you've got your helm area. So behind the helm seat or the captain's chair, you've got your refrigerator, and you've got your microwave. Do I like having a microwave? A thousand percent yes, because I love having a hot meal. You want a hot meal, in my opinion. Do I like having a refrigerator? I actually do like having a refrigerator. It's got a little freezer in it as well, so I'd recommend that to you. In terms of your captain's chair, you've got your typical back support. Uh, nice to have. Comfortable chair. The one issue that frustrates me about this particular chair, though, is there's not a a foot rest that you can put your feet against when you're when you're sitting in it that's a little bit frustrating i i really wish they had thought of that so let's look at the helm now all right so helm area they've done a really nice job making sure you've got enough space to have everything you want to have i mean you know we've got in this case two large garmin screens and uh I've got it set up for side scan in the works, which by the way, side scan is amazing. I mean, if, you, if you can get it, obviously it's an option, but I'd highly recommend that you consider it. In terms of electronics, it's got great electronics. I've been very, very happy with them. Uh, and just overall, been happy with this uh, setup. I think the design 
is uh, relatively smart. We've got um, windshield wipers. You can open these uh, front windows all the way up. You can slide open the side windows, of course. So you get plenty of ventilation. Uh, but overall, you know, we've got a windlass in the in the uh, in the bow. Um, bow area is pretty cut and dry. Not much to say about that. But let's go ahead and. Uh, take a look at the uh, cabin real quick and then I'll give you a final synopsis of my thoughts. All right, so obviously we're in the V-Birth area cabin now and I'm five feet 11 inches and there's a pretty decent amount of room here if you wanna lay down. And so just to give you a sense for this, Here I am, and look at me, I got space. Now, you might say, could two people stay there? Yes, my wife and I have actually done two overnights in this boat and uh, went from where we are in the Potomac River to St. Michael's, Maryland one time. Really fun trip, did an overnight. And because you've got the heating and AC inside here, great and uh is it something that you're gonna want to spend days on probably not one night it ain't so bad not at all actually so we really had a good time uh so outside of the v-birth under each one of these areas you got plenty of plenty of storage right so i got a lot of like life jackets and whatnot uh, we've got a sink We've got a coffee slash hot chocolate maker. And then we've got a John. And the great thing about the John is set up so it can go to the tank or if you're offshore, you can go overboard as well. I like the fact that you don't have a separate bathroom. Steiger Craft, for some reason, on their larger model, the 31, and I'm not sure if they're still doing this, but they had it separated the bathroom had, like at a wall but it wasn't it wasn't a very big bathroom and this is a mistake that a lot of a lot of i think boats walk arounds even make is oftentimes you don't need it to be separated because you're going to be in here by yourself do your business and you're good to go and so i like the fact that the john just sits right underneath the v-birth that's way smarter it's just a smarter uh design You've also got really easy access to your electronics here. Um, and so you can get to that easy. It's not a lot of work. I've had boats before where it was a lot of work to get access to your electronics. Now, in terms of the rest, you're not going to have the super nice finish. I mean, this is not, again, this is not glitz and glamour. It's just good old fiberglass in here. But overall, really solid cabin. And that's the, that's the thing about the boat. It's a solid boat if you're looking for a solid boat that is for hardcore fishing and you know you want the pilot house if you do that occasional overnight well then this really might be a great option for you so hopefully now you've got a pretty good sense for the steiger craft 28 chesapeake version with that pilot house you say well marcus how much did you spend on the boat? Give me a sense for pricing. Any review should have that. You know, I'm gonna, I wanna be really honest with you. So this is a 2020. Um, I got this new for around 200 and I think it was 20,000. Got a figure, I put another like 26, 27 in the Sea Keeper one. Um, but that was with essentially the bells and whistles with the, uh, Outrigger, second home, all that, all that stuff, about $220,000. And uh, I added a FLIR light after the fact, because when you go out of Oregon Inlet and it's dark, you want to have a FLIR light. So I've got that added and added the side scan um, as well. Now, who would I not recommend this boat for? Well, again, if you want a pursuit-like boat, which is a great boat, and your primary focus isn't fishing, but maybe uh, fishing combined with a lot of uh, cruising and overnights with the family, this probably isn't the boat for you, right? But if you really want a hardcore fish, especially 
in the Chesapeake Bay, it's awesome. Now, I took it out a lot from Oregon Inlet, and I would just say that it was really good on the days where it was two to four footers, but beyond two to four footers, it's gonna beat you up. Now, I mean, that's true for probably most boats that are less than 30 foot, but just keep that in mind. You're not gonna tackle six and seven footers very easily in this boat, certainly not head on. And so, Hopefully now you've got a sense for who it's for, who it's not for, whether or not it's the best pilot house out there. Is it better than a Parker? I think it is. I think the design's better, but anybody that has a park is gonna say, I think Parker's so much better. And there's some other pilot houses out there as well that are true offshore style boats, if you will. But love Steiger Craft, love the company. They're very, very salty. And after all, that's what this channel is all about. And so with that, my friends, stay salty.